Welcome to Object Oriented Programming Tutorials. Now what I'm going to say is pretty much universal throughout other languages as well and I'm going to teach you general things and you can apply to any other language like Java or even PHP or any other language that supports object oriented design. And this is for those people who have never ever encountered object oriented or you are simply learning C++ for the first time. If you want more basic tutorials on how to start with C++, I have a series of other videos that you can go and check out. Let's get started. In front of me is the code blocks IDE. I'm going to be coding pretty much everything here. I have a tutorial on how to install code blocks on Windows, Mac and Linux in my previous video. You can go and check that out if you want. If you have already done that, let's create a new project. To give you the basic definition, Object Oriented Programming or OOP simply refers to a programming paradigm where instead of relying on data types and data structures only for a certain data that you are trying to process, you also define the operations or function that can be applied to a particular data structures. Not only that, the objects can also have the relationship between one another, just like the real world. In real world, when you have to define where you are, you can say that you are part of the planet Earth, which is the part of the solar system that we live in, which is the part of the entire universe. You can define that using object-oriented very, very easily. Now, I want to talk about the basic concepts that are introduced because of the object-oriented programming design. It not only applies to C++, but any language. The fundamental of object-oriented programming lies in the class. You can define your own class of objects. For example, let's create a class called Universe. Now, Universe is a class. So now I can create my own Universe here. I can say Universe X. That means that I have created an object of the type universe and this object's name is yux this is one instance of the universe that I've created you can simply run this program it does nothing basically and when you create this universe you can set the types of parameters that you want to be initialized with the universe to do that you can have different properties of the universe for example let's say that you want an integer type x equals or not x let's say total characters and let's also say you have a name now what i've done here is i have created two properties of the universe that i can use but these properties are by default hidden in class and because they are private so this information will not be leaked to anyone outside the universe I will not be able to access them but if I want to access them I can put them in public but I'm not going to put these in public but I'm going to create a something called a default constructor now this is a default constructor for our universe The default constructor is the constructor that is invoked when you are not passing any values when you are creating an object. For example, here you are not sending any types of parameter when this universe is created, so default constructor is invoked. Now since you are not doing anything here in the default constructor, if you simply leave this out, it is fine because that's what the default constructor would do if it is not defined inside here let's say that I say total characters is 10 and name is default then that means that when this universe is created now the total character is going to get initialized to 10 and name is going to initialize to default if I declare another universe called Y this is also going to have the exact same property but y is a completely different instance from x. To be able to differentiate such things you can override the constructor and you can say that 
the universe when it is created it takes parameters and the parameter is going to be total characters and it's going to take std string name let's see if it compiles runs fine but it does nothing yet what I also want to do here is I also want to print out print universe when I say print universe I just want to print out all the parameters I'm going to say print universe now since the print universe is a property of a type universe you cannot simply do print universe here you have to say for which value either x which variable either x or y do you want to print the universe for so you can do either x dot to call a method or you can do y dot print universe that is called invoking a method of an object let's see what it does now shall we so as you can see here name default total characters 10 it have printed the same thing twice because we haven't defined any property for x and y but now instead for y when it is creating the object let's send some parameters let's call 12 and let's call it DCEU build and run now as you can see here it is very confused what is going on that is because we haven't said to do anything inside the universe overridden function overridden constructor sorry now as you might have noticed here the name of the parameter that the universe is accepting when it is not a default constructor is exactly the same as one of the properties that I've defined before and it, this is totally legal but they are two completely different variables if you want to differentiate between these two you have to do this total characters is going to be equals to total characters this total character refers to this one and since I'm doing this and an arrow and total character means this particular objects instance of total characters and not the total character as a variable here same thing with the name all right let's print it again there you go as you can see here now the name is DCEU total characters 12 so what's going on here is that you have created two universes the first universe you have named X the second universe you have named Y the X is created with the default parameters the Y is created with your own custom parameters that you have sent the first one is total characters is 12 and you have changed the default value it goes from 10 to 12 and the second one is DCEU you have changed the name from default to DCEU so for X this total characters is 10 and for Y this name is default even here it is a good practice always to use this because this will refer to the current instance only and do not just change the variable and forget about it and after that you are asking for access instant what is the value of this name and these total characters and it will print out those values and they are different for x and y because they are completely two different variables so you might be able to imagine how much you can do and how much your program would improve when you use this power of object-oriented design it just makes your code a lot cleaner and you'll be able to do things in such a way that it makes sense when you talk about it in the real world 
Now I hope you get some feel of it. I want you to marinate this idea in your head and in the next video we will improve upon the same concepts. So to get my next video please subscribe. If you like this video give that like button a click. If you have any concerns put them down in the comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video with a lot more content and you guys are awesome for watching this video.